We're about to go to war on society to try to overcome the obstacles to, or the, the challenge which is posed by climate change. We have to overcome the obstacles to dealing with it in a different way. We have to learn how to do things in a different way. When America started off at the beginning of the Second World War, it gave itself a matter of is it two years to be able to change its industry onto a military footing. And it did it all within a matter of six months. Within six months, it, was, it met all of its targets. I'm saying that there is a possibility of doing it if you have the social and you have the political consensus and will to do it. What can you tell us about um, what the international Baha'i community is and how they're active in different affairs around the world? Well, as I mentioned, we don't have any clergy that are professional Baha'is. Mm -hmm. So Baha'is organize at the local, national, international level through elected bodies of nine members. Uh, elected in you know, a very democratic process with no nominations, no campaigning. Uh, so it's really selecting the best in the community as seen by the people themselves in the community. And so uh, the Baha'is, I mean, there's a national Baha'i community in Australia, in New Zealand, in each of the Pacific Islands, and so on. And then, uh, the, then all those national Baha'i bodies elect this international body, uh, the International Council in Haifa, Israel, because that's where Baha'u'llah was sent as a prisoner by the Turkish Sultan and died a prisoner in 1892. So the Baha'i World Center is, is in the Holy Land in, 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 in Israel. But then we are also organized at international level. We have a Baha'i international community representation at New York, United Nations. Mm -hmm. I represented the Baha'i community at the United Nations you know, Conference on the Human Environment in, in Stockholm in 1972. So at that time, I was for the Baha'i community, contributing to the United Nations. And I joined the United Nations, worked with them. Now I'm back on the NGO side. We're preparing our own ideas to help the, the UN find its way forward in solving these problems. We prepare statements for the United Nations on these challenges. How do we rethink prosperity? How do we bring the gender dimension into these problems? How do we you know, find a way forward with respect to economic challenges like extremes of wealth and poverty? So we try to contribute to the dialogue on these issues and help people take their thinking forward in finding positive ways towards the future. Very interesting. So, yeah, you were talking about the network, I guess, of, of um, from the local to the national to the international um, community, the Baha'i community. So these, these people that you elect to be on these kinds of councils, um, there's not one amongst them that's sort of a leader? The Baha'i system has gotten away from individual leaders making decisions. It's this collective process of consultation among the group, looking for the maximum diversity, because we, we, we appreciate diversity. Mm. We like to see diversity you know, on, the, on these groups, mm. and they consult together and make decisions for the community in consultation with the community. So it's a very democratic process without individual leaders who make any kind of decisions. So, and there's local, these local kind of committees, yeah. you know, in all the, sorts of places, are all, they? all the around world, all New of, Zealand, all around the, world, all around the there island. There are enough Baha'is in a community, yeah. they form one of these bodies. And so, so how many Baha'is do you need to form one of these committees? Nine. Nine, yes. okay. And, and you talked a bit about um, when Baha'is get together with other Baha'is yes. or invite other communities yes. and other people of faith to come together to worship that you call them uh, devotional meetings or devotional gatherings? Yeah, they're different things. Some of them call them the tranquility zones or you know, they're different words they can use from a time because in our, in our society we've often lost touch with our spiritual dimension. We're so busy with daily life running and running. Mm -hmm. A time just to get together, to reflect on spiritual things, to pray together, to read from scriptures, different scriptures together, uh, maybe to share a bit of music or something, other kind of beauty you know, together. We need that for balance in our lives as well. So Baha'is try to share this with our communities and invite others to join us in those activities. Mm. And so what are some of the other activities that Baha'is are involved with uh, around well, the world? Well, I've mentioned, you know, studying together, study circles. And so we have, because we think the part of our spiritual growth is to turn to the scripture spiritual teachings, think about them, reflect on them. And this is better done in groups because you can learn more about a diversity of ways of understanding something if you're sharing views of other people. So we, we, we form small groups to study together and to learn how we can, in fact, become, you know, might say, re replicating, this, carrying this process forward, inviting others to join us as well, and learning how to do that as well. Building our own capacity to be of service, not simply to talk about something, to think about something, but to act and do something. Go and visit an old person who was in need, or to help with some children's activity, or so on, and taking these principles of making them work in our own neighborhoods, in our own villages, in our own communities. Mm -hmm. And so these uh, these study circles, mm -hmm. you call them, do they happen everywhere? Everywhere, all around the world. 
wherever they're Baha'is, they're trying to organize these, inviting others to join in them. And that's one way in which we're saying, this is how we can transform society. Because mm. so it's not going to be from the top down, right. to build it from the bottom up. In each group, say, we're facing big problems in the world, let's work together to find solutions to them. We need everybody to do that process. We invite everybody to join us in that process of transformation. And so do you have to be specially trained to no. run these things? No, that's, that's part of, of the, the wonderful thing, that we don't have any clergy, we don't have any professional Baha'is. Everybody can learn to do this. Hmm. And part of the process is building that capacity to invite others to do it as well. Because that's the only way we're going to transform seven billion people on this planet. It's not going to be waiting until we have experts who can somehow do this process. It's when people doing it for themselves and growing together in that process and transforming. Thank you so much for uh, being our special guest today. In case you've just joined us, just to let you know that we're welcoming you. This is Baha'i On Air and we're welcoming you from the Tasmanian Baha'i Centre uh, in Hobart in Tasmania. And our special guest has been Professor Arthur Dull. Um, from the International Environment Forum and um, the International Baha'i Community. So thank you very much, thank you. Professor Dahl. We need a mind shift, a real mind shift in, in how we approach being consumers in society and how we see things in society. Just knowing about the signs isn't enough. You know, we need to have the human dimension, the spiritual dimension to solve these problems. And I think that's one of the themes that's really come out this weekend. We have to think differently. If you're going to have the same results, keep doing the same thing. But now we've got to change the way that we do things because times are changing. People just accept that climate change is an issue and that we need to act on it. Well, I've been interested in saving the planet for the last 30 years and wondering why nobody else was. And so now I can see there are other people interested.